जय हिंद एवरी वन दिस इज श्री चौधरी एंड टूडे आई एम हेयर अगेन विद अ न्यू टॉपिक दैट इज द सिंपल हार्मोनिक मोशन सो लेट एस राइट डाउन सिंपल हार्मोनिक मोशन एंड देन वी विल स्टार्ट सो टॉपिक हेयर इज सिंपल हार्मोनिक हार्मोनिक मोशन so before starting the topic let me give you the information that this topic is in cbsc cbsc class 11th class 11th chapter 14 chapter 14 when we talk about ib board that is the international baccalaureate board in that this chapter is under wave phenomena wave phenomena phenomena and this is chapter 9 chapter 9 which comes under hl level which comes under hl level and in igcsc igcsc this chapter is chapter number 16 chapter number 16 which is section 3 section 3 a level a level so in different boards uh, this chapter comes under different categories but the concept of the chapter is going to remain same the concept will never going to change so let's move ahead before starting uh, or before stating about simple harmonic motion let's talk about a wave what do you mean by a wave whenever energy travels through a medium and strikes a particle since there are infinite number of particles in a medium and energy is traveling through a particle creating a disturbance in the particle which is definitely termed as wave whenever the energy travels through a particle it creates a disturbance in the particle and that uh, disturbance in the medium will be termed as wave when this energy strikes the particle the particle will be performing simple harmonic motion or you can say it will be performing uniform circular motion it will be performing uniform circular motion so from here we got a concept that energy uh, stri striking with a particle and that particle will be performing uniform circular motion so from this point from this point we have to carry on with uniform circular motion so let us draw a circular path so now when the particle is performing uniform circular motion let it let it be the center and here we are having the diameters here we are having the diameters this is the point o this is the point a if the particle is traveling from a to b let this point is b and we have joined these two points let this point is your radius r we can definitely consider these points okay now if we join this point over here and this point over here let this point be your n this point be your uh, maybe capital p okay and this is your x this will be your x and this will be your y this will be your y if we need to mark then we are going to mark this part as your theta this is the angle which is being covered by the particle when the particle is traveling from a to b and in uniform circular motion theta is being termed as angular displacement theta is being termed as angular displacement so let me write down theta is equals to angular angular displacement 
displacement okay where the formula of theta is omega t where omega is your angular velocity and t is definitely the time t is definitely will be your time okay from the diagram let us consider three triangles o n b hopefully it is clearly visible o here is your o here is your n and here is your b in triangle o n b can we write down over here that b n is equals to y o n is equals to your x o b is equals to capital r that is the radius o a will be equals to capital r your radius so in some of the cases if we consider that n lies very near to a in some of the cases if we consider that n lies very near to a then we can replace n by a then we can replace n by a and in that point of time x will be equals to r at that point of time x will be equals to r okay so let me write down this information that if n lies if n lies very near very near to a then n will be replaced by a and therefore o n is equals to x will be equals to o a and x will be equals to r this is a case this is just a case okay so let's take up the triangle that is o b n as you can see from the diagram o b n we are taking this triangle from this triangle we can say that we are having the base we are having the perpendicular and we are having the hypotenuse so we can use some of the trigonometric functions which are being defined by the ratios of base and hypotenuse and by the ratio of perpendicular and hypotenuse okay so let's go for it in triangle in triangle o b n if i say perpendicular upon hypotenuse this is the ratio which has a name as sin theta so perpendicular is your y and hypotenuse is your r so on cross multiplying r sin theta is equals to y isn't it in case of theta we can write r sin omega t is equals to y so this is the displacement of the particle in y axis which is being given by r sin omega t okay now still we haven't defined simple harmonic motion still we haven't defined simple harmonic motion we have just given this information that whenever the energy strikes a particle the particle performs uniform circular motion and from that uniform circular motion we got an equation we just got an equation and we are trying to solve the equation basically we are trying to solve the equation and we are trying to approach a result where we can define the simple harmonic motion in a much better way so let us get the equation that is y is equals to r sin omega t from y is equals to r sin omega t we can consider omega t as let it be small p let it be small p okay since the particle is performing uniform circular motion again i am repeating hence the angular velocity of the particle will remain constant since the angular velocity is constant then on differentiating both the sides over here we will be getting first function into differentiation of second function plus second function into differentiation of first function equals to for p we will be getting dp since omega equals to constant and the differentiation of constant is zero the differentiation of constant is zero this is the basic mathematics that we know hence omega dt is equals to dp omega dt is equals to dp 
So let us write over here y is equals to r sin small p differentiating both the sides for y we will be getting dy r is being multiplied with the variable so r is being copied which is the constant for sine p we will be having cos p dp so cos p in place of p we have to write down omega t in place of dp we can write omega dt equals to dy so again on cross multiplying we will be having dy upon dt is equals to r omega cos omega t so dy upon dt will be termed as velocity in y axis that is r omega cos omega t so let's look at the previous slide in this slide we know that omega is your constant r is your constant therefore omega and r are being multiplied and kept together that we can see over here that we can see over here so we got the equation of velocity basically from the velocity equation we can definitely get the equation of acceleration that is for v we can write again we should keep omega t is equals to small p omega dt is equals to dp that we have already achieved in the previous slide so uh, we are just going to write down r omega cos p okay differentiation of vy is dvy is equals to r omega in brackets for cos p we know the differentiation is minus sine p dp minus sine p dp we are going to keep the equations uh, the values of uh, p and dp so let's write down the values dvy is equals to r omega in brackets minus sine omega t dot omega dt on cross multiplying dvy upon dt we have cross multiplied dt under dy this part is constant this part is constant and it will definitely come towards this and hence we will be getting minus r omega square sine omega t on the rearranging minus omega square r sine omega t so this is your acceleration in y-axis. So can you remember what is the value we have kept for r sin omega t? For r sin omega t, we are having y. Let's go previous slides and see what is the value of y. Over here, you can see y is equals to r sin omega t. So in place of r sin omega t, we can keep y. Hence, over here we should write down acceleration in y axis will be equals to minus omega square y this is again a major equation we have got so from this equation we can say that acceleration is directly proportional acceleration is directly proportional to displacement with a negative sign what shows this so first point we have got that acceleration is directly proportional to displacement and it is in the opposite direction which is shown by the negative sign. So for simple harmonic motion, what are the two conditions we got over here? We got first one that the acceleration should be directly proportional to displacement and for the second one that the acceleration should be in the opposite direction of the displacement. So these two points we will be getting over here. Hopefully, you have understood what is simple harmonic motion. Uh, if you want to ask any question regarding this, you can uh, directly message me over here uh, and uh, definitely you can give your feedbacks. Thank you.